So to start off with, we're going to have a quick look at the first polyline we're going to be using to help us generate our first grading string. If we zoom into this particular area of the drawing, you'll see that we have a red polyline, which is dashed. Now, if I select that, you'll see that that is on a layer called underscore CSD site dashed boundary. I'm going to open up the properties of the particular polyline. And you'll notice that the polyline is closed. Now, it's not essential that the polyline is closed. However, this polyline connects back onto itself. So ideally, we would hope that the first and last point would be interpreted as being the same elevation. So in this case, we've made sure that it's closed. If it's not, it just means that the first and last point of the polyline will be interpreted as being different. Just going to press escape a couple of times and just remove the properties dialog box. So to start off with, we're going to go up to the Roads tab, and on the Roads tab we have our grading panel. We're going to click on the Create Grading pull-down, and click on Create Grading. We're prompted to select the polyline. Now, whenever you're selecting a polyline that has width associated to it, ideally you always try to pick the edge of the polyline, not picking somewhere centrally, but picking the edge. You'll see that because we've got the highlight turned on, um, we can see that being picked. The grading string form is then displayed. Now every grading string requires a name, so we're going to provide it with the following. Underneath, we can assign a template. Now we will look at templates a little bit later on, but these are templates that are found specifically within this project. Underneath that, we can then provide a target surface. Now, we only have one surface in the project, which is the NS. This is the surface which will be referenced within the vertical design or for any batters that may be applied to the particular string later on. We have an initial elevation being preset for us. Now, we can actually change this. So, when you click on the picker tool, you'll be prompted to left click somewhere in the drawing. So, all I'm going to do is left click just randomly, just somewhere in the drawing in the background. What's just happened there, the software has read the target surface where we just left clicked, hence why we have a value of around 26, and you can see there's a contour of about 25 up there, so that's about right. Now, it doesn't really matter if we'd have left that as it is, but it just means that we're setting the grading string roughly at the right elevation when we're starting off. Underneath, we have spacings. Now, spacings are very important when you're starting off with your grading string. The idea is that we can ask the software to review or target the target surface at a set frequency. And at the moment, this is uh, a one meter. This particular grading string is nearly one and a half kilometers in length. So every one meter is probably a little bit extreme. So what we might do is say 15, 15 meters instead. Now, the great thing about the grading string is that at any point you want to come in and revise these values or manage your grading string or edit your grading string, it's exactly the same form. So at any point we can come back in and make changes. We'll talk about the corner angle increments and the outside corner method when we come to do our grading string number two and number three. To the top right hand corner, we have the option of not creating a surface. Now this particular grading string is simply going to be the tie-in between the natural surface and whatever we have to design internally within the site boundary. We don't need volumes, we don't need contours, we do not need any kind of surface, so we're going to check the box to say no surface creation. Now at this point all we need to do is click on create update. You have to wait just maybe a couple of seconds because this is a fairly extensive grading string. It's actually the longest one we're going to do within the project. You'll know when it's finished because a couple of new tabs will appear at the top of the form and you'll also get the vertical grading editor button appear down the bottom. We're going to have a quick look, in not much depth, but just a quick look at the vertical grading. So we're going to click on the vertical grading tab at the top. The grid editor allows us to actually edit elevations along our grading string. Now at the moment we have a single elevation which is at 26.134 at the start and at the end and obviously those two points are the same position within the drawing. But you can see there the little white arrow is indicating the direction of those changes. We're going to be running a very simple tool that's found down the bottom from a suite of tools at the bottom of the form. It's the fourth one in from the left and this will essentially every 15 meters which is our spacings rate, sample 
or match a point or an IP onto the target surface, which is the NS. So every 15 meters, we'll have a point matched onto the target surface. So we're going to go ahead and click on that button. This will remove any design that you might have done. So if you've added some IPs in yourself and set some levels and elevations, etc., then this will wipe those out. We're going to click on yes because we haven't made any uh, design changes yet. You can see that the software is now running through that and it's just completed. It's now run through every 15 meters. Any additional points that you may see are actually the vertices on your polyline. So whilst we, yes, we've generated a point every 15 meters, there will be extra points of definition that are required as that polyline, for example, goes around a corner. Um, so it's important that we pick those up. Let's click back on basic settings. Then we're going to close down the form and look at our next grading string.